Maddie loves podcast. Maddie loves podcast. Welcome to episode 14 of Maddie Loves Podcast. I'm your host, Matt DeSimone. And uh, here in episode 14, uh, we are continuing along here in October. And this episode is, again, dedicated to all things Halloween. Um, This week, I have the pleasure to be joined by three guests. Now, as always, I'm joined by my pal, Dr. Tom Lucas. Tom, how are we doing today? Good. Doctor in quotes. (laughs) That's right. (laughs) Right. Um, Street doctor. Street doctor of geek knowledge. I I learned everything I know about nerdery from the rough streets of Detroit. (laughs) So what, what, what have you, what have you been up to? Since, I mean, since the last time we were here, since the episode, the 13, the dreaded 13. Oh, the dreaded 13, which we survived. We did. With, with, uh, yeah. with great, um, style and panache. I've been su- super, super busy on the, uh, author front, uh, with promoting my work and all that. Um, since we last got together, I, uh, recorded an hour-long interview on a podcast called The Drunken Odyssey, which will come out sometime in November, which is kind of an Orlando, um, establishment. He's, like, on episode 160 or something like that. Then a couple days later, I blew the rust off of my spoken word, um, uh, side of things by doing a, a featured reading at an open mic, a storytelling open mic, and then, um, not, uh, not last weekend, but the weekend before, I uh, paneled and had a table at Speculative uh, Fiction Southeast, which is a new writing uh, conference here, uh, based here in Orlando. I sat on a panel with the esteemed and uh, somewhat controversial Orson Scott Card, um, you know, shake his hand and then punch him. You right. know, it's kind of what you want to do. I don't care for his personal politics, but his world building... Uh, you know, must uh, generate respect, and it certainly does for me. And then uh, this upcoming weekend, I am tabling and paneling at Necromonicon 2015, uh, and there's a lot of cons that call themselves Necromonicon, so I don't know whether or not they're all related or not, but it is a a horror and um, sci-fi convention that's uh, in Tampa every year. And I'm on three panels... Uh, that one, one of which is, uh, yes, mom, comic books are literature. <laughs> so um, like I super, wish super super stoked for that. Awesome! I wish my uh, American Lit Two professor in community college uh, would sit in on that panel. She looked mm-hmm. at me uh, the very first day of class and said. Well, you can't consider comic books to be literature, can you? Oh, we're in a fight now. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yes, those those are fighting words. And, uh, <laughs> you know, um, all of us, all four of us on this show are writers. And um, many of the people who listen to the show are writers. And you, um, in this day and age when there's so much stuff out there to choose from, you have to really hustle. And uh, I'm definitely... In hustle mode right now. Buy my books. Thank you. <laughs> right on. Well, um, I'm also joined with uh, our uh, special guest uh, from episode 13. Dr. Josh Begley is back to hang out with the gang. Thanks for joining us again. Hey, it's my pleasure. And it is doctor without quotes. He yeah. is. He is a doctor. doctor. He is a doctor. <laughs> no. Cred- credit where credit's due. That's right. Well, thank you. Well, yes. Street doctor sounds pretty awesome. <laughs> like, a, like a street shaman of yeah, nerdery. I know, I know. And, you know, I throw 20-sided dice at people That's and open right. up portals to empty wallets. I think you just wrote your next Bizarro work. I write? <laughs> I think so. The street <laughs> doctor. So. So what have you been up to, Dr. Josh? Well, I've been writing a lot of reviews. I started also... No, let, where do where you write your reviews? Let them, oh, uh, yeah, let sorry. Them. I write reviews for the Fandom Post. And got a, the last review went up on Saturday. And it was just this little coffee table book about owls. It's called Owls, Our Most Charming Bird. And I got it. Who because... wrote it? <laughs> oh. <laughs> this is a good... 
<laughs> it was, uh, yeah, I hear Marlon is a really great author. It, it should is. be noted that um, Dr. J here <laughs> is not a casual reviewer at the Fandom Post, but I do believe a month or two ago you celebrated your 300th I did, review yes. on yeah. the site. Wow. Yeah, yeah. that's not just d dabbling. That's no, work. No, it's not. That's, you must be the senior reviewer there. I'm not sure. I think the guy yeah. who owns it really yeah. is the senior reviewer. By default, yeah. I suppose. But I get a lot of stuff, and a lot of eclectic stuff. Random House keeps sending me stuff. Like, uh, just the other day, I got two books. Uh, one is called Gestapo Mars. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, which is, I'm not entirely sure what it's about, but with a name like that, you gotta love it. Oh, yeah. right, yeah. <laughs> and then the other is Mycroft Holmes, which was written by Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Yeah. And Stop Sarah. it! What? Yeah. Yeah. Is He's co-written by him, so... What's it about? It's about uh, kind of the, the, almost the inciting incident that causes Sherlock's older brother to become the most powerful man in Britain. What? So it's fiction. It's fiction. Is it a book or a comic? No, it's a book. Wow. wow. Yeah. How old is he now? I mean, he's not a... He's got to be in his 70s, I think. Wow. So in the, in the final turn, he's writing fiction. Writing novels. Yeah. I, bet Kareem, writing novels. I bet Kareem would still kick your ass, though, you know? Uh, my dad says, you don't hustle enough. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> I was making jokes like that, too. I was like, I'm going to write this in my review. <laughs> it's a good book, but Kareem doesn't hustle enough. <laughs> Um, oh, that's awesome. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'm working on that. There's mm -hmm. this um, deadline for a short story uh, opening. I've, it's called First Lines. I forget where the the magazine is, but they give you the first line, and it, it was something like George, uh, George uh, Page, the intercom, and said, Mrs. Whitaker, there's a visitor here for you, and you just run with it. Okay. And so... How many words... I'm not sure. I always write out by my fiction by hand first. So I what's, oh, the, wow. what, what's their limit for the submission? Oh, their limit? I uh, think it's about a thousand. Mm. Mm -hmm. So Flash, really? Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, about Flash. Maybe a little bit more than Flash. Okay. My whole idea, like, I just started writing it, and it was one of those things where I was like, well, let's see where the pen takes me. Yeah. And I've kind of got this idea of, like, you know that the in the movie Uncle Buck, when Buck is called in <laughs> by the principal... And she's like, You're, here's a quarter. Yeah. You go downtown and get a gnat to gnaw that thing off your face. Exactly. So I kind of had <laughs> no, this sorry. idea of like this Uncle Buck encounter, but with the Uncle Buck character being a vampire. And, oh, and it's like, okay. you were saying my granddaughter is biting people, but you don't know why she does that or something. You know. Okay. Like, perfect for, perfect for the slide. season, man. Yeah. 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 Perfect yeah for, this is a website or a publication? It's or? a publication. Yeah. Okay. And, and that's the publication's name, First Lines? Or is that the particular I feature? I should have looked this okay. up before I came in. <laughs> that's got, okay. like, a million things well, going on. Well, you, you got to know that we asked the hard questions. Oh, I yeah. know. Not I as in, like, uh, <laughs> physically intimidating. Yeah. Uh, just they're difficult to answer. They are. Right. But I'm, I'm, I'm a little behind now because my desktop has died on me. Oh, um, and so, what? Yeah, I got in. I, I had to break down and buy a copy of Windows 10 so I could do a clean wipe and install. Uh, and so it's a pain in the... See, there's your first mistake. Is there yeah. Was a, <laughs> yeah. I like Windows 10. Oh, man. Okay. I don't want no Windows hating going on. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, let's not argue about calculators anyway. <laughs> Yeah. They all break down. My calculator's better than yours. Uh -huh. Well, Josh, thank you so much for joining us. Um, and then finally, we have an extra special guest, uh, author Sydney Williams. Sir, thank you so much for uh, coming to the Matt Cave today. Ah, pleasure to be here. Uh, it was a long trip, uh, about uh, ten minutes. So. Oh, well, <laughs> wow! Didn't, wow. didn't realize how close uh, how close the encounter was going to be tonight. So. Well. Um, Again, thank you so much for being here. Uh, Sydney is the author of Midnight. many, many, many books, but the one we're going to talk about tonight is <laughs> <laughs> the one we're going to talk about tonight is Midnight Eyes. Uh, how long has this been on the shelves? It's actually uh, it came out in 2011. Okay, so, and it's my most recent novel. And I have completed and turned in a novel to Crossroad Press, who is the publisher that's bringing my stuff out of late but uh it's uh, it's not out yet it's called dark hours and so 
Midnight, and it's a lot thinner than uh, Midnight Eyes. But uh, anyway, Midnight Eyes 2011. Okay, all right. So uh, now, Tom, you've read Midnight I just Eyes. recently completed Midnight Eyes. Okay, so um, uh, overall, um, is this a uh, is this a horror novel? Uh, no, uh, suspense, right? Suspense thriller with suspense um, thriller uh, with some horrific uh, elements. Horrific elements. I would agree yeah. with that. Okay, I would, I would agree. All right. Um, now, I I, had, uh, I looked over the uh, the synopsis over uh, the internet, and um, there were just a couple questions that I wanted to ask you. Uh, Based off the synopsis, first off, um, it says that men are being lured to agonizing deaths in the small Louisiana city of Amesley. Is this true? I, that's true that that's what the book's about. I actually made that up. Okay. But, Amesley uh, isn't a real place? Amesley is not a real place. I feel betrayed. Uh, Did no. we say this was a work of fiction already? Um we said suspense. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. This is fiction, folks. Yeah. So. yeah. yeah. Um, there were a couple of cases that kind of inspired it, but uh, yeah, it's 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 made up. And Amesley, Amesley is a lot like a town called Alexandria, Louisiana, but it's not really Alexandria, Louisiana. And, and um, you're from Louisiana. I'm from Alexandria, okay. Louisiana. Oh, so, okay. uh, right. so, so, so you went with the the hometown. There, there's inspiration. plausible deniability there. And uh, uh, Alexandria is right across the uh, river from Pineville, Louisiana. And uh, in my uh, little fictional universe, there Amesley is right across the river from Penn's Ferry, Louisiana. So uh, so it's uh, sort of like uh, Yachnabatafa County or whatever uh, from Faulkner. <laughs> right, yeah, exactly. Okay, all right, right on. Um, uh, the, the, the very end of the synopsis, it says, only a terrifying excursion into the darkest heart of midnight can bring the nightmare to an end. That sounds terrifying. And uh, I hope that's true. Um, it, uh, it, it actually... Uh, ties back to a dream I had many years ago, and I just had this vision of this kind of um, um, laid-back, I guess, uh, FBI agent walking down a hill to the scene of um, some gruesome murders. It was, it was a nightmare I had, and I'm not sure exactly what all I, I was exposed to. But, Were you uh, just an observer? <laughs> or were you the FBI agent walking? I was no, I was just an observer. Okay, um, and uh, uh, I always knew his her surname was Hood, but um, I, I never, I never, you know, as a kid, wasn't really able to write the book. But years later, it all kind of came back to me. And uh, there, there was a real case in Louisiana of this small town where there was a, a couple, and uh, uh, um, they turned murderous and that was kind of the nucleus of the idea and it, the the book is a lot bigger there are a lot more murders than in the uh, true story and uh, it uh, uh, env envisioned this uh, sheriff who needed the help of his FBI agent son to solve this series of murders and so brought my FBI agent back down the hill uh, oh, right. from that dream uh, oh, right. and uh, he is the guy that has to plunge into the, the darkest midnight to uh, uh, get to the truth of these murders, which is uh, hopefully a little surprising. Tom maybe can speak to that. Uh, um, surprising? Yeah, because uh, and for, first and foremost, I don't read much in the way of suspense thrillers, but I certainly have watched more than my fair share, you know, and um, the artistry of the killings and the gruesomeness of them because um, they aren't just run-of-the-mill murders. There's a lot to them. Uh, I'm trying to really dance around revealing anything at all here. It reminded me of something like Silence of the Lambs or Seven or something along those lines. Um, what's happening to the victims is so um, mortifying especially as a man, um, that when you sort of, you know, with any suspense thriller kind of uh, story, you know, typically I'll get into the framework of, God, what would I do? Or, right. oh my God, what if this was happening to me? You know, sort of thing. Um, boy, yeah, it's, uh, it is, it's, pr it's pr pretty awful stuff. I thought that the first part of the book was kind of a slow burn, 
We get to know about the relationship of the father and the son. Um, there are several uh, members of the cast that are introduced, um, and things are starting to uh, sort of bubble up. Um, by the time we get around the third turn, it, it really starts, it ramps up in a very dramatic and satisfying way to a, a really explosive conclusion that, um, you know, for me, it was a really wonderful reading experience. I really enjoyed it. And perhaps instead of watching all this stuff, maybe I'll read a few more in, in the genre. Well, I, I, I'm glad, I'm glad it, it worked that way for you. And, uh, it, it is based on, on a, a, a true true murder, at least one true murder that uh, occurred as the murders in the book do. And uh, it's also based on my years as a reporter in central Louisiana. And part of the time I ran the cop beat and was a police reporter uh, in addition to other duties. Uh, but so I was in and out of the sheriff's office in central Louisiana all the time and in and out of the different police departments and also was heavily uh, uh, involved in the media, and the media's coverage of the case is a big part of this story as well. It is, and, uh, uh, and I I, th I felt like it was written with insider knowledge, yeah. like you know what goes on in a newsroom, what are the kind of things that you have to deal with when you're a reporter, because it's not just about gathering facts and illuminating the truth, but there are a lot of people to please, you know, um, you gotta you gotta get viewers. You know, and yeah. that's the if it bleeds, it leads part of, of doing the news. So um, it's neat to um, I had known that you had been a journalist, but I didn't know that that had been your beat. Uh, it really comes through yeah. in the story. Felt very authentic. Uh, and yeah, the, the uh, assignments editor uh, driving one of the TV reporters in the story is uh, you know, an amalgamation of, of, of many overzealous uh, uh, editors in print and broadcast. But uh, yeah, a lot of, a lot of times um, uh, boundaries get pushed and things like that. And so I wanted to write about all of those experiences and what, uh, you know, what affects trying to get to the root of a crime. And uh, had uh, uh, an interesting time writing it. Uh, read homicide textbooks, homicide investigation textbooks, not books on how to commit homicides, <laughs> but, but ho homicide. Um, um, That's kind of uh, the detective. sort of uh, additional benefit. Yeah, of doing yeah, that yeah. Research, yeah. <laughs> but, learning uh, how to murder properly. Right, right. Yeah. But uh, a lot of the things that uh, that uh, the FBI agent in the story is struggling with and the nightmares he had, I actually had some of those nightmares because you read all these, uh, you know, uh, uh, investigation accounts and then you read a lot of serial killer cases and, and, and then you go to sleep and uh, <laughs> right. all that all that bubbles back up. So it was an interesting time writing that. Um, I, w I was married at the time I was writing that one and... Uh, uh, my wife was talking about all the serial killer books that were stacked around our apartment at the time or whatever. And, and one of her friends said, yeah, your parents come in and they go, Christine, maybe it's time for you to come back home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, yeah, clear, clear history. Right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Clear history. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, awesome. Well, folks, going out there, we've got authors in the building right now go out on amazon pick up some of sid's stuff pick up some of tom's stuff and uh and check it out uh a few more questions real quick i had for you sid um i want to know who michael august is uh michael august uh is a young adult fiction writer and he often dedicates his work to sid without whom this work would not have been possible interesting um I had written several books in my the early part of my career um, as a writer in um, for adults, not adult fiction. Uh, I guess uh, it was not writing porn. We'll put it that way. Oh, there was this one thing in a book. There's called, some uh, saucy <laughs> scenes in yeah. Midnight Eyes, though. Well, I was kind of like, what? If you if you look hard enough, there's a story out there too called Lucifer's Lair that was in a. Um, uh, uh, an anthology published by uh, Ryan Nos Eros Books. Uh, and to research that book, I can't remember the anthology that one was in now, but to re re research it, I had to read a book called Seductive Specters. 
And so it's it a lot of fun. Awesome. <laughs> calling up the uh, calling up the uh, <laughs> you know the uh, mail order house uh, to order a copy of Seductive Specters, <laughs> and uh, the uh, uh, the operator or whatever. You know, this was pre-internet, I guess, and uh, or I mean, you know, internet existed, but it, it was you weren't doing a lot of ordering. So I'm on the phone with the operator from Ryan Rhinoceros Books. So it's and, like rhinoceros. And then Eros. Eros. And then, uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, and so anyway, <laughs> That's so, so weird. And so I'm <laughs> feeling pretty goofy about ordering, you know, having to call a porn house, basically. Do you, do you still have it? Uh, I do not have a copy oh, of it, but uh, it, it, it's Saros. I just got that. That's so <laughs> that's so grown. Oh. That's like five grown. So and a I'm, kick. I'm a little I'm a little embarrassed about calling this 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 <laughs> company's mail order division. But yeah. I get the operator on the phone, and I've been told that I need to read the collection by the editor of this book. Read the collection, Seductive Specters, in order to get a feel for the. Uh, you know the, the the tone of the stories and all, mm. and uh, so the uh, operator is telling me, well, we don't have a book called Seductive Specters. We've got one called Seductive Species. Okay, if that's what you're reading, that's what I will order. <laughs> and indeed, Seductive Specters arrived in the mail. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm, I'm picturing a book with like a sexy leopard on the yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so is this like about uh, ghosts that um, do do the nasty? Uh, yeah, yeah. That was yeah. Uh, that was the nature of Seductive Specters, mm-hmm. and then uh, ours were uh, the, the collection I was in was a little. A little different, and my my um, my story was essentially about um, uh, a website because so I'm thinking the story had website in it, so it had the web the web had to exist, but but it was you know it was AOL days, mm-hmm. um, and uh, so my story is about uh, uh, the devil's website essentially or the devil's <laughs> ah, the devil's heaven's uh, gate dark Fox side. News ah. <laughs> uh, oh well, oh, oh. oh. It's a little darker than that. Yeah, but, I think uh, so. Uh, I think the so. Uh, yeah, Fox News is darker than the yeah. Devil's website, but um, um, <laughs> the um, um, uh, main character is visits this website and is influenced by what he sees, and it takes him into uh, dark, dark corners. Uh, Interesting. So Michael August. Uh, uh, Michael August. Yeah, we were talking about Michael August. So so Sidney Williams had written um, um, a t- material. Other than that, Lucifer's Lair material for an a, 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 an older audience, and so I was asked to write some young adult novels, and we wanted basically a separate brand and to differentiate the Michael August, what became the Michael August books from the Sidney Williams books, and uh, and uh, I had always been on the bottom shelf as Sidney Williams, and so they said, well, we need you know a pseudonym for you to write these uh, these books under. And I, uh, I said, okay. Well, I want to be at the top of the shelf. And oh, August. Uh, it's like in the phone book when you get a triple triple A service. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And what? so, and it was August. the The contract was signed in August of of that year. And so, uh, so anyway, that was how Michael August be- was born. Between your 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 Sydney Williams and Michael August, how many novels have you written, Sydney? Uh, I believe it's uh, it, it's. Um, no, let's see, five five original novels uh, in the early part of my career, three Michael August novels, and then Midnight Eyes makes it uh, 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 nine. Wow, all together yeah. and uh, Dark Hours, which will come out in the we'll near future, is ten. Make it a nice nice round yeah. ten. Yeah. Wow, That's impressive. Cool. Yeah, awesome, awesome. Um, I, I was <clears throat> just looking at your bio, and I saw that you have a book entitled Nelfs. Nelfs, yeah. Yeah, Gnelfs. <laughs> no, G, the G is silent, the like G. gnomes. Right. Uh, yeah. it's, so I can only guess uh, that Nelfs have to be sort of like horrific gnomes. Uh, they're kind of they're kind of an amalgam of gnomes and elves in the story. Okay. But uh, I uh, I was watching back in the the days of. Um, uh, I guess we still have them, but when there were many sensational talk shows, uh, I was watching uh, a, a talk show, and they had a guy on 
who was talking about uh, that Papa Smurf would draw pentagrams. <laughs> oh my God. And, you know, and there were these, these, these and he was finding uh, um, um, Dark images and all kind of things. Sure. And he had a book like with something about the dark secrets of Halloween or Looking something, kind of appropriate for our, <laughs> our our month here. But um, so so he was he was finding evil in comic books and everything. And I started thinking, I go, well, what if there were guys maybe that were were creating something like the Smurfs, and they uh, you know they wanted some realism to their story, so they incorporated real symbols into these. Uh, into the artwork of these storybooks and things for kids, mm. and then what if there was somebody that were uh, that was exploiting those? And so the story focuses on a, um, a single mother, and she has a, a, a little girl, and uh, her favorite uh, her favorite cartoon characters are Nelfs, which are little green guys, and in the, the you know the stories they they seem harmless and everything, but um, it. Uh, turns out there's a sorcerer out there who is working on behalf of a, a guy that the mother jilted. Oh. And uh, to, to harm her, he's going through the, the storybooks. And uh, so she starts, first starts getting like invisible cuts. And then the um, the Nelfs begin to take on more uh, real personas. And uh, uh, they have to try to survive. And uh, happily, this uh, guy that was actually in my notebooks uh as a high school kid, uh, uh, this kind of mysterious uh, wanderer named Danube shows up to help. And, uh, so it's kind of like Smurfs meets Halloween 3 season of The Witch. Yeah. <laughs> Plus, like, maybe Leprechaun. <laughs> little Leprechaun of that, series, little of that. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, maybe a little supernatural. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then we, uh, we, get, uh, we get other uh, other other darkness as the story moves along because... Um, uh,